Hello, it's Phil Thatch here again, and uh, once again, Heather's, how do you pronounce Gerber Daisy? Gerbera. Gerbera? Mm hmm I may have pronounced it wrong in the last video. Heather's Daisies, let's just call them Daisies, uh, have produced another bloom that I really like. It's, it's another red one. She's got some white ones, and they're just not doing well, so uh, you know what they say, uh, you might as well make hay while the sun is shining, so... The daisies are blooming, so let's do another macro picture because in the middle of the winter I'm going, wow, I wish I could take a macro picture, and here it is summertime and they're blooming, so so let's do it. To, uh, the other day I did one down in the basement in the garage uh, with natural light uh, with the daisy mostly filling the frame, uh, and this time I'm going to have the daisy more than fill the frame. I'm just going to go as close as I can. I'm going to be pretty much right at minimum focus distance on the Tokina 100 f 2.8 macro and um, so we'll see how that turns out and now I'll show you um, the setup that I'm using for this and then we'll get into the settings here we go so there's the daisy in the soldering clamps just like uh, last time except for this time when we're on the kitchen table I think you might be able to see Heather in the background working on her University of Georgia master's degree uh, while I'm piddling around with flower photography, but I've got three of these lamps, these LED lamps that cost $5 or $5.99 at uh, Walmart that Heather bought for me. She bought one for herself and I fell in love with it and she bought me two more and I've kind of commandeered them all um, for macro photography. And then of course I've got the Tokina 2.8 100mm macro and the FTZ adapter and behind it is the Z6 on the tripod. And I've got uh, three sources of light brightly shining on the face of the flower. And uh, again, I'm just focusing on the very middle of the flower for this shot. In order to get the camera close enough to the flower, I'm doing the, the 90 degree uh, option with the Manfrotto 055 tripod so I can get it close enough. And like I say, I'm at absolute minimum focus distance with the Tokina 100 millimeter f 2.8 macro. Say hi, Heather. Hey. So here's the back of the camera, and as you can see, I'm at ISO 100 and f64 this time. The closer you are to minimum focus distance, the smaller you can close the aperture down on this lens. Um, the picture that I made the other day, and I'll put a link to that video, it was uh, the smallest I could get the aperture was f45. But here at minimum focus distance, I can get it all the way to f64, which gives me the maximum depth of field. Um, I just before I put this lens on, I cleaned the lens sensor, so I shouldn't have any problems with um, dust on the sensor. I didn't have any in the picture the other day. And you know, it's it's manual focus, but you can look at the square there and see it will turn green when the camera feels like it's in focus. And we'll see if I agree. I'll zoom in. Yeah, that looks pretty good and in focus. So we'll go with that. You see the green box there. And of course I'm going to use the remote shutter. I've got silent photography on. This is this is a pretty wobbly situation I've got going on in here. So I'm going to take a lot of these. ISO 100 F64 1.3 seconds to get the exposure right. And I'll take a few of these. Uh, the other day I used, I squirted some water on the flower, and this time I'm not squirting any water on it, but I believe what I'm going to do is take a few without, and hopefully I'll get a good one during this. And then I'll take some with some water on the flower. Okay, so I'm going to give it a couple of squirts with the old mister, and then we'll make some more pictures. I'm kind of hitting it a lot and then shaking off the big drops and then just the small drops will remain. Hopefully that's the plan anyway. sure that we're still showing in focus 
Oh, I've moved during all that shaking. I've moved the flour, so I'm going to have to recompose. Yep, I definitely moved the flour some. I don't want the I don't want the center of the flower directly in the center of the photo. I want to have a little composition going on here. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. I think on these I like it better without the water. I think I may have messed up my lighting. Oh, but still about right. Okay, so I think I'm going to like the no water version better than the water version this time. But I'll put them in the computer and see. Well, I thought while I have this whole thing set up in here, I would go ahead and see how uh, this petunia comes out. The petunias are a little bit more difficult because uh, where a daisy is kind of flat all the way across or nearly flat all the way across, the petunia has a lot of depth in the middle and it's, it's the middle part of the flower that I'm the most interested in having in perfect focus. So that kind of leaves, if you're doing a, a one shot non stacked thing like I'm doing here, that kind of leaves a lot of the flower out of focus. Um, but anyway, while I was set up, I thought I might as well go ahead and try it. So let's make a few of those. I, had, I backed up a little bit, so that made my maximum uh, um, aperture f57 now. And uh, the light changed a little bit, so now it's two seconds exposure. I'm still using the remote shutter release. And I may try another couple of compositions on this flower and see if there's anything else I like. I may back it up some and do a full flower shot. I found another one that I liked. Make a few shots of that one. Well that should give me something to work on for a while. I'll uh, check those out and uh, maybe throw together a video and I hope you enjoyed watching this and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.